this young. You're getting a shot of a walking back. Thank you. Somebody maybe gather sort of on that side here. Guys, if you want to sort of grab photos or whatever. <coughs> Special guests and staff members here at the media event to launch the First Nations kit design for the ICC Men's T20 World Cup. I am Dr. Peter McKenzie, an elder and descendant from the historic La Perouse Aboriginal community here in Sydney. La Prairie's Aboriginal community, okay. I am very proud to present this welcome and an acknowledgement of Indigenous involvement in Australian cricket. A fitting tri tribute, perhaps, to that pioneering tour of England by Aboriginal Australian cricketers in 1868, 154 years ago this year, in which they became the first organised group of Australian cricketers to tour overseas to the UK. On behalf of the Lapras Local Aboriginal Land Council, community members and our elders, it gives me great pleasure to most warmly welcome you all here today to our traditional country of the Cadigal people of the Eora Nation here in Sydney. And I am especially pleased to welcome our Indigenous sisters from interstate and to wish them a very pleasant stay in our traditional country. As you may know, the welcome to country our contemporary interpretation of receiving visitors and new friends who may wish to visit areas within our traditional country which we call well, it's our traditional uh, country. So the ceremony also gives us the opportunity to pay respect and especially acknowledge our elders, past and present, of all religions and all cultures and to reflect on our shared history and build a vision for a prosperous, reconciled and sporting future. Today, we wish you all a safe passage back to your homes, wherever that may be, secure in the knowledge we hope that you felt that you were made very welcome. I'm Dr. Peter McKenzie. Please be COVID safe. You are all important to this wonderful game of cricket and Australia. Thank you. Tell us about the design. What have you done? Uh, well, I've submitted it back in 2016. Yeah. And um, I've um, titled it Walkabout Wickets. And um, it's to do with the um, past, present and future. Awesome. Players. Fantastic. And so Walkabout Wickets is the circle in the middle. Just tell us about the past, present and future players and, and, and how the, the, the elements here um, represent that. Uh, the um, past players is, um, were the ones that passed on. Yeah. And uh, the ones that remain today. And of course we have the uh, present of today. And future, hope for more. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And Courtney, other elements of the design have, have come from yourself. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So Australia is lucky to be, um, you know, home of the oldest continuing uh, culture in the world. And we're really lucky, I think, as, as cricketers to be able to, to don this jersey. Um, within that, to be able to reflect and represent all Indigenous Australia is quite hard with such a diverse and rich culture. But what we did do was, was place elements of land, sea, skies, um, we've got the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flag colours which we were able to put on the shirt. Um, we weren't able to put the flags on, um, but we were able to get the colours which is really special. Um, within that we've got our stars uh, representing our ancestors and the deep orange that um, pays homage and nods to where Indigenous cricket began, which is in the Impaja Cup or the National Indigenous uh, Cricket Championships out in Alice Springs. So there's a, a great connection there. On the back, um, is where we've also got the first 11 represented. First 11, yeah. And um, we have the um, representation of, of our family and our journeys all the way through um, from yeah, past and present to what we hope to achieve for the future of Indigenous cricket. 
Brilliant, and uh, Auntie, I think you have a you have a connection to cricket through your family as well. Yes, I have. Yes. Um, it was the um, a great great grandfather and his brother. It was the cousin boy. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And Courtney, yourself, you also been a, a member of Cricket Australia in the past. Yep. Um, as an ex ex employee, but those who can't do administrate. So I was, um, yeah, working under the <laughs> Indigenous and social inclusion, um, but. I also play for the Queensland Indigenous uh, women's team. I've been their captain for um, a quite a little bit too long, actually. Um, but yeah, so uh, to see our men wearing this is, is really, really special, given the connection of the sport to um, you know the, the foundation of this country and the foundation of this country's identity. I think it's really special. Uh, a reflection of my own is that for the Australian men's cricket team to be wearing such a, a special jersey like this for the whole tournament. Um, is really embracive of First Nations culture is something that is ours. This is our identity um, as a country and as a, as a game. And this is, um, yeah, this speaks more volumes than I think we can even be able to articulate. So. And as a team. As a team. Has a good family. Yeah, and win as well <laughs> while wearing it. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for, for coming down. Really appreciate it. And I know the boys love wearing it, as you can see behind you. So thank you so much. Yeah, it's extremely special. I think being the first first cricket team to be able to do it at a major sporting event is um, something we're not taking lightly. And as you said, it looks great. Um, we're extremely proud of it. We were able to wear um, something similar up up in the uh, top end series, and uh, to be able to wear it during the World Cup is something we're really looking forward to. It's not far away. Is it all starting to feel real now? Well, there's still a lot of games to go until the, <laughs> until the World Cup. I think before the top end series, I think we had like 15 games before the the World Cup in about six weeks. So it's a it's a busy, hectic time, especially with these couple of days as well. Um, you never, you never stand still. That's for sure. So it's, um, it's an exciting time coming up to the World Cup, and um, the lead-in feels like it's gone forever after last year. So it's, it's exciting to have it in our um, home country. Is um, yeah, really special. Yeah, I think for T20, it's nice to get that rhythm of, of games and um, it doesn't matter if you miss out a couple of times, there's always another opportunity coming around. Um, we've still got some games against West Indies, England, and I think a practice game against India as well um, before the World Cup starts. So we'll have plenty of time to adapt and adjust after the Indian series. So um, it's something we're really pumped and looking forward to. Like, similar feelings to, I think, 2015 when we hosted the World Cup and the lead-in was so... Um, exciting and um, a bit nerve wracking as well. Not really. I think uh, any time you go into any um, major tournament, Champions Trophy, World Cups, um, probably Ashes for these boys, um, you're, you're always nervous about um, what the outcome could look like. But um, once you get into it, it's still a game of cricket, and um, hopefully there's a big crowd that you can sort of soak in the atmosphere and, and really enjoy it. It certainly is. There's a lot less time in the field, that's for sure. Um, it all happens pretty quick, and um, I, I think he'll certainly enjoy um, having these games in India. Um, he enjoys batting there. Um, we have to go back to Chandigarh, where he's played at one of the IPL franchises there, one of the eight I think he's played for. Um, so he, he'll enjoy being back there. Some nice wickets over there as well. I think we're playing at Nagpur as well, so um, we've got a couple of nice pitches where we have start our lead-in towards this World Cup. Yeah, I think we saw it, um, saw it a lot last year. I think during the UAE um, in that tournament, I thought he was he was outstanding with our whole bowling group, and I'm sure these guys can attest to that. He was uh, brilliant with the the strategy side of it, and um, and the way he keeps the keeps the group nice and calm, and um, was able to communicate with the bowlers. It's it's a it's a very underrated thing in T20 cricket. You think it's all sort of helter skelter, and it's just going along to plan. But he he's he's really good tactically, and. Um, yeah, don't discount what he, his value as captain. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, uh, one of the rare things he has, which there isn't a whole lot of in Australia, is just raw power. He's able to muscle the ball um, much in the same way Stoinis and Mitch Marsh do it. They're, they're um, power hitters, and he's certainly got a lot of power. He's, he's probably developed his game a little bit over the last two years where he's able to go a bit more offside as well, so he's not just one direction. Um, he's not a one-dimensional hitter. He's able to... Um, clear the boundary in different areas. He, he does it against spin and quicks, which is something that's really impressive and something that impressed me during the IPL as well, watching him go about his business. Do you think he's losing too much of the MC? It might be something we see more of now. The fact he's almost circumvented, I know he's played BBL, but kind of from outside of the system a little bit? Yeah, I think T20 is a hard one because you play so many different tournaments over the world, so you've sort of got to have your your eyes sort of looking all over these, these formats. You're watching the 100 in England, even though it's not T20, but it's still a shorter format short format game so um, you're always looking out for the Aussies and seeing what they're up to uh, whether it be the PSL and, and other tournaments like that so um, it might be the new avenue in um, if it's if you maybe injured during the BBL it might be an opportunity to play those other tournaments and and put your hand up. Yeah pretty happy for him he's um he's a good air god uh, it was at the pre-season stuff with him um, a couple of weeks ago before we went away and um, he looked in really good spirits. He was pretty happy with um, how his pre-season's gone and he was just excited to get back into it. Um, he had a, a trip over to India during the off-season as well um, to the MRF Pace Academy in Chennai and uh, said he absolutely loved it. And um, Will's, a, Will's a cricket nuffy. He, he loves loves soaking up new information, trying new things. Um, and for him to go over there is um, is going to be great for his game. And hopefully it, it's a good sign of things to come for this summer because Australian summer with him going well is, is really exciting for Australian cricket. I think I was the only spinner apart from one game. I think Doe played one game against Sri Lanka and I was the only spinner there, but that was a long time ago, wasn't it? <laughs> a lot's happening between then. Um, yeah, I, I, it's something that I've made no secret of. I've worked really hard over it, on it um, over the last uh, couple of years and I think being able to have a couple of pre-seasons during the COVID, um, the COVID times, I was able to spend a bit more time working on it um, and doing some uh, video footage and sort of seeing how it looks and how it felt. And, and trying to associate those things two together. So it's, it's been nice being able to spend a bit more time at the bowling crease and, and try and take the load off these guys and um, give them a, a bit more options at the, at the death and um, it allows us to actually bowl guys at the right time when they need to instead of having to force them um, in at the wrong time. Oh. One day cricket, not yet. Well, we were just arguing about it over there. I think one of the quicks can uh, potentially do it, so then they can't take any breaks off. The, that'd be nice. Maybe Starkey or... <laughs> nah, I, I, it doesn't really matter. I think the way that we've set up our side at the moment, I think whoever takes over, we've got a, a really strong leadership contingent, I think, in the, in the group. We've got three or four guys that have captained Big Bash, a couple of guys that have captained the country. Um, so there's there's options, whoever, whoever does it. And... Um, I think what what we've created in the change room is a is a really solid group that um, hopefully it's an easy job for the next captain. I think I think once he gets out in the field and and takes control of the team. Out, out there, I think he's just so focused on the job that he he almost sort of forgets about what's happened either early in the day or what he's going to do later in the day. He's he's, he's been able to focus on the job at hand really well, and um, and that's a credit to him. Obviously, it wasn't the easiest time for him over the last little bit in one day cricket, but um, his attitude has never changed, and the the professionalism he brought to the team was was brilliant, and um, we're obviously very thankful for when he took took over the job. It was a pretty pretty tough time, and um, he took he took care of the group and, and got him out the other side and so I, th I think I'd, we're all really proud of the way he's led us and um, yeah thankful to, to have played under him. We heard you shed a few tears. And oh come on, <laughs> <laughs> he did catch me a bit by surprise, but yeah, it, it was an emotional time because um, we've 
we've been playing number 196 and 197. Um, debuted pretty similar uh, times. Uh, lived together, been pretty close for the last over over a decade, and um, to know that the next one day that uh, we play and he's not going to be there, it's 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 going to be different. But uh, we've still got the C20s together, and um, it's nice now we've sort of moved different sides of the of the bay, so it's we've got a bit of separation now, so it's going to be nice. Good. Yeah, it's um, it's outstanding. We um, we've obviously worn this indigenous design a, a couple of times, and um, to wear it in a World Cup, it's pretty um, it's pretty special. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We feel, especially I guess when the when the World Cup's at home, we get that feeling of representing the whole country as we did in, in 2015 and had some success there. So, hopefully, similar scenes this time around. No, not for me. Uh, I can't speak for everyone, but I sort of go into every series, every tournament, the same same frame of mind and take every game as it comes. Um, don't look too far ahead. So for me, it feels very similar. Probably the only thing different is we're on our, we're on our home grounds here at the SCG and MCG and so on. Um, we're quite familiar with these scenes. So, um, yeah, I guess that's the only probably difference that I see. Yeah, I think so. I think we know what we're coming up against here. Um, we know the conditions, we know the wickets. Um, T20, the wickets are usually pretty good. So I guess um, in that regard, there's not too much difference. But um, yeah, I guess it's just familiar. And we might get a few nights in our own bed as well <laughs> during the tournament. So that'll be uh, handy as well. Yeah, we have conversations regularly on tour um, between whether it's the physio and the, and the coach, um, you know, with the other quicks as well, just talking about what a plan might look like. Um, I guess it's easy or easier with the white ball. We know it's pretty much how we're going to bowl, how many overs we're going to bowl. But when it comes to tests, they might get a light test here or a heavy test here. So I like to go on the run and play by ear and see how we're feeling at the time and make decisions on the run, I think, is probably the best way to go about it. Um, but yeah, everyone's different again. Um, yeah, look, I'm not too sure. I haven't given it a great deal of thought, to be honest. I think, again, probably Maxi touched on it with the quicks. We're probably going to rest white ball here and there, so it's not like, I guess, Paddy with the test matches playing every game, hopefully, barring injury. Um, we probably use those moments in white ball to rest here and there, so, um, you know, that could create a reshuffle of, of captaincy and, and vice captaincy all the time, so um, you probably want someone in there who's stable and um, playing every game makes it a lot easier, I think. Uh, oh, I think there's always pressure when you're playing uh, any game for Australia, let alone a World Cup at home. So there might be a touch more there. But um, as I said, most of us, well, quite a few have done it in, in 2015. And we've played big test matches here and Ashes Series here. So, um, yeah, I think the boys are, are ready and obviously flying high from still from last year at, at the UAE there. And um, we've got some good confidence. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, not, not yet, no. Um, as I said, I sort of take every week as it comes, every game, and um, that probably, again, looks like our only rest period for the quick, so um, at this stage, no, I haven't given it any thought. Have they asked you to the uh, A few teams have asked a question here and there, um, and I said, I've sort of said the same thing, resting period, probably. Your rise as a, as a white ball bowler sort of started just before the last World Cup, but how do you reflect on it? And I know you've spoken a bit about how it's sort of taken precedence over the test match cricket quality boost, boost selection, but how, how do you just view where your white ball cricket has gone in the last 12, 18 months? 
Uh, yeah, I've been pretty happy with it. Um, I think, as I said before, I think it's just come through opportunity and playing continuous, you know, whether it's T20 or one-day cricket, um, most likely, well, majority T20 the last couple of years and um, being around IPL teams, being around the Australian team, just learning off guys who have played so many games of cricket, um, different coaching staffs, just sort of blending that all in together and, and hopefully putting it out there in the middle. So, uh, but opportunity would be the main thing. Yeah, I think we've got a good relationship with Finchie over the last... Well, the, the bowling attack's been pretty similar um, with Finchie for the last, well, however long he's been captain, really. So um, we know each other really well. And as you said, pulling the strings out there on the field, um, discussions with the strategy team and with the coaches. So I think it, I think the Wobble, all, all teams at the moment really feel like they're they're quite senior and there's, there's a lot of guys who sort of take the leadership upon themselves when they're out there in the middle doing their skill, chosen skill. So... Um, there's quite a lot of experience out there in the middle and I think you know it'd be quite easy for the next captain to come in and, and just seamlessly transition that. Just from you, how have Thomas and Cameron Green gone from before this year's one day series? We seem to have taken that sort of another level. Is there anything to look at that as being a question for most of these one day Um Yeah, I think I'm surprised by Greeny every time he plays, really. Um, I was probably more surprised in Sri Lanka, not very foreign conditions for a young guy to go over and, and play test match cricket in Sri Lanka. And, and do what he did, scored some valuable runs in the first innings. And um, his bowling as well just goes strength and strength every time he, he ties the boots up. So, yeah, I don't know what his future looks like, but it's um, handy having him in the team. Have you seen the possibility of sliding into the role of starting over in the T20 before? Like, have you mentioned going to India and places where you wanted to be? Does this work for any other England side? Uh, yeah, there's probably, there probably is to a degree. Like, with a couple of guys out injured at the moment, um, it's probably a good opportunity to get him a couple of games. Um, I think Mitch Marsh and Stoinis are injured as well, so that sort of he could slide in and maybe take one of those roles um, for this tour. And I think when we're at full strength, he's probably just a touch off at the moment. But um, yeah, as we've seen, um, it won't be long. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. Surely no one's got any questions left. <laughs> Yeah, extremely special. Um, we've been fortunate enough as a group to, to wear um, a few kits now um, with the Aboriginal artwork on it um, from Auntie Fiona and, and Courtney as well. So obviously we wore it through the, the last two series um, up in North, North Queensland. Um, the women's team have worn it for a, for a while as well, but to, to be the first Aussie cricket team to wear it in a World Cup is going to be extremely special for us. Um, so, I mean, we'll take a lot of meaning from it and hopefully... Hopefully the fans that um, pick up a shirt can, can enjoy it as much as we are. A couple of series down now already. Does it all start to feel real? Are you thinking about the World Cup that bit more and more? I guess it's always been back of mind. Um, I mean, we've got three more series before the World Cup, so um, the circus just continues. But, um, yeah, obviously it's it's getting real close now. We've now got T20 cricket leading up to the, the World Cup. So, um, you know, teams will start to form a form shape and, and I guess that tactical side of it will come into it through the next three series before that, that first game of the World Cup. You hear in so many sports, you know, I guess the, you know, the winter coach, the footy coach, teams talk about it going back to back and how kind of difficult that is. Like, do you think it's a more challenging proposition to, to back up a World Cup win and, and, and to do it here at home, you know, I guess you know, following on from last year? Yeah, generally speaking, it probably would be because of the bigger gaps between World Cups. I guess we're in a, an interesting position where we're, we've held the World Cup for 12 months and we're now playing another one. So, um, yeah, it, it, no doubt any World Cup is going to be incredibly difficult to win. Um, that being said, we've got a, a very, very similar squad to, to that of the one that won 12 months ago. So we know each other really well. Um, obviously in Australia, it's going to be a, a big part of it as well, um, playing in front of our home fans and, and families and friends. and. Um, which comes with that added pressure as well. So, um, yeah, no doubt it'll be exciting. Um, the pressure's going to be there, no doubt. But um, a huge opportunity to go back to back and, and win one in Australia. Is it a good thing to be going to India to play them? Huge it's always an exciting opportunity to play India. Um, they've obviously set the, set the ben benchmark for a, for a long time now. Um, incredibly talented group uh, and will really test us in foreign conditions in the T20 format leading into 
we'll see the five games we've got back in Australia and a warm-up game before that, that first game. So I think the extended run of T20 cricket leading into a, a World Cup's um, always going to be a good thing. Obviously, the conditions will be extremely different to, to that we'll face in the World Cup. Um, but yeah, T20 cricket, the conditions don't change too much on the day. It'll just be coming back to Australia. I haven't seen that myself, but um, I think T uh, Twenty cricket brings everyone back to the back to the middle. I think um, it's such a you know, game of where one moment can change a fixture. So um, I don't think you can write off any team. I think we proved that last World Cup. <laughs> we were given no chance and picked up the trophy. So um, yeah, I don't think you can take any any team lightly, particularly in a World Cup and particularly in a format where you know one hiccup can really derail a. a derail a campaign so um, yeah we'll be taking everyone on the same same grain of salt. Yeah, it's well known that sort of Sean Walsh would have been able to take wickets in, in first overs of spells. Going into a, a world tournament, is that something you, you latch onto? Is it something that motivates you to be able to set the tone in that way? Um, I'm not sure I've ever latched onto it. Um, that's just part of the role that I've played in, particularly in white ball cricket um, from the early days of my career. So um, yeah the role of mine's been to obviously a lot of the time, take the new ball, be aggressive. Um, at times, I've been more expensive, but try and take wickets. Whether it's set that tone or, or try and get into the middle order as quick as we can. Um, that's yeah, that's a role that I've played for for a long time now in, in all formats, but particularly in white ball. Are you expecting quite a high-scoring World Cup out here? I mean, if you look at the the 15 World Cup in one-day cricket, I think all barring one game were incredibly high-scoring. Um, White ball cricket in Australia, the wickets don't tend to change too much, well, especially in a game that only lasts three hours. So um, I'm sure it'll be even contests, depending on, or regardless of what the, the wickets throw up. Um, but yeah, if, if that's any, any indication of what, what the uh, scores might be like, it'd probably be high scoring. Have you, um, would it be interesting welcoming Tim David into the camp, like uh, to, to many of the guys know him? I look forward to meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's obviously plied his trade in, around the world in, in different different leagues, um, and he's got his opportunity now, in, in obviously in the World Cup squad. But this next week in India um, to to get amongst the group, and um, if, I think a few of us will meet him for the first time and and see what he's like. But um, yeah, I'm much the same as you guys. I've seen him on TV. Um, obviously, that power and, and what he brings to the table to any team he plays for, and, and now he's got a chance to do that on t on the international stage. Quite a unique situation, isn't it? Quite sort of coming in for a World Cup and have not played for Australia before. Yeah, it is. It uh, seems to be the way of the, the T20 world at the minute. Um, more and more franchises. I think we'll see more and more players in that fashion, I guess. And um, certainly the next generation, I'm, I'm sure we'll see it more and more with, with more opportunities in different leagues. Um, that's just the way that cricket seems to be heading at the minute. I certainly won't be. Years. Yeah, I certainly won't be bowling balls at, at uh, 40. Um, I'll be watching at the pub with Josh probably. Um, <laughs> but no, look, we, we. I think their records obviously speak for themselves. To have played as much cricket as they had have done, to take as many wickets as they have. Um, they're they're incredible talents, incredibly skilled players. We know what they can do in their home conditions with with a swinging seaming ball. So um, yeah, it's so far down the track that we haven't haven't even thought about it. Um, obviously they've just come off their test summer and, and whatever may have been said by different people, I, I don't know, but um, yeah, when we get to uh, this time next year or the Ashes next year, I'm sure there'll be discussions about it. For us, it's this week in India, we've got a World Cup and then our own test summer. Thanks, cool. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Ciao.